So during last week's session, I had promised that I would show a small video on uh, ROC charts. So here's that one. So okay, so this time I've taken a small example that corresponds to the uh, slide that I showed on ROC. The first slide with, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 rows of data. So I think that'll be a good one to use to explain what exactly is happening in our ROC code. Okay, so that file is called ROC small.csv and I will post that file. Uh, so here what I'm doing is reading that file as you can see the first line of code says dat is read.csv roc small.csv uh, and I'll post this code as well. Okay, so let me execute that. Uh, so that file is read and I've read it into a data frame called dat. So what I'm going to do is open that data frame. Okay, and what it's showing you is that you've got some data frame called uh, with columns called age, income, and class. Okay, class is the target variable which we are trying to predict. And let's assume that zero means non-buyer, one means buyer. Okay, and we are trying to build a model to predict whether somebody is a buyer or not. Uh, so you've got the class and what's here is, this is the actual class. Okay, so in reality, the first row represents a non-buyer, in fact, the first four rows represent a non-buyer, the fifth row represents a buyer, and so on. Okay, so that's what the data is actually showing. There are 10 rows. Okay, and prob is the probability that some classification model has calculated for this person or this row representing a buyer. Okay, so for the first row, the probability that the person is a buyer is only 0 0.011. For the second row, row it's 0.378 and so on. Okay, so that's the idea, the probability of being a buyer. Okay, now the reason that I'm showing you the probability is that the ROC chart is used to select the cutoff for uh, a case to be accepted as a success, success being one or buyer. Okay, so obviously if the probability is only 0 0.011 of somebody being a buyer, you're likely to classify that case as a non-buyer. Okay. But it depends on the cutoff. Okay, by default, our uh, all of the methods in R they use 0.5 as a cutoff, and therefore any case with a probability of 0.5 or more, or you could say strictly greater than 0.5, will be classified as a buyer and otherwise not. Okay, but again we saw in situations where we might want the cutoff to be lower or higher, depending on our context. Right, so if we want uh, to be very strict in classifying somebody as a buyer, then the cutoff would be higher than 0.5. Whereas if we want to be quite lenient in terms of classifying somebody as a buyer, then we may choose a cutoff lower than 0.5. Okay, so it depends on what we mean by success. So, so for example, if success means that uh, we are going to classify somebody as a criminal or as a fraud, okay, then we would of course employ very tough criteria. We'll say, well, only if the I'll go, only if the system calculates a probability of greater than 0.8 are we going to classify that person as a as a you know a criminal or a fraud or a murderer or whatever it is right we want to be very careful there whereas if we are trying to classify somebody as a buyer then our cutoff may be much lower right we may say well if i classify somebody who is not a buyer and classify them as a buyer my cost may not be very high Whereas if I took somebody who is not uh, who is not a buyer, classified them as somebody who is a buyer, and classified them as an as as a non-buyer, then my cost may be very high. Okay, so that's where the cutoff starts to play a role. So the ROC chart is used to identify the cutoff. Okay, so uh, first of all, let's look at how the ROC chart is generated from this. Okay, and we already have shown I have shown you the code to do this, right? So if you use the code, what you're going to see is you're going to see that I'm reading the data, so I've already read it, right? So let's take a look at the distribution of this variable called class in our variable, in our data frame, okay? So when I do uh, table dat dollar class, I see the result here. The two classes are zero and one, and there are five of each, okay? Zero is five, one is five, okay? So there are five success cases in our uh, data frame. Success cases meaning we are classifying one as a success case, meaning finding somebody is a buyer. Okay, so let's take a look at head that no need because we've already seen the complete data set. It's got only 10 rows. Uh, 
So we are seeing the complete data set here. Okay, so now let's go on and generate the ROC chart. Okay, in fact, the ROC chart is already here. So if I ran these lines of code, as I will do now, okay, and uh, you just calculate the pred object, the, the, the perf object, and then you plot the perf, and then put on, put on the 45 degree line. So this is what you get. Let's look at the way in which this chart has been generated. So in order to generate the chart, what the system does is it first sorts the data by probability, descending order of probability. So that's what I'm showing you here. So the uh, earlier data that I showed you was like this. This was the original data, wasn't sorted by probability. So what I'm doing now is sorting it by probability, descending order, right? So the highest probability is here and so on. So that's what the method does. And then what it's going to do is it considers the data row by row, right? So if we take the first row, then the probability is 0 0.903, forget about the probability, its class is one, okay? So then it says, okay, if I look at only one row from this chart, so sorted by probability, then my, uh, remember, I have a total of five cases which are success, five cases of where class equal to one, right? So if I look at only one row, I'm able to identify one of those five cases, so my probability, my true positive rate, right? That is uh, the rate of correctly identifying the positives, which are ones that jumps to 0 0.2, okay? So now when I look at, uh, and of course the false positive rate is zero, right? Because at this point, I have not identified any zeros as ones. So look at it this way. Suppose I had used a cutoff as 0 0.903, then I would have classified the first case as a success, and every other case as a failure. And therefore my true positive rate is one out of five, which is 0 0.2. And the false positive rate is zero because we have not identified any zeros as ones, right? Of course, we've got a lot of false negatives because a lot of uh, ones we have identified as zeros, but that's not what this graph is plotting, okay? So I look at the second row, my true positive goes from 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 because I've now identified two out of the five. Okay, my false positive is still zero because we have not identified any uh, uh, any ones as zeros. Okay, then we come down to the third. True positive goes to 0 0.6, false positive is still zero. Finally, we come to the fourth. The true positive goes to 0 0.8 and the false positive is still zero. Okay, so that is why at zero, you have four points which are really here. It goes all the way up to 0 0.8 here. Okay. Uh, so that's what you've got up to line four. Now you go to line uh, six, uh, okay? Of course, these numbers are now jumbled, so they don't represent anything. So you come to this case, what happens is, you if your cutoff is 0 0.558, okay? Then what happens is that your true positive goes to what? It is still 0.8, right? Because uh, you've, you know, you, if your cutoff is 0.558, you will identify this as a as a one, right? Which means as a buyer, whereas it's really not a buyer, right? So your false positive at this point increased to 0.2, okay? So that's what this point here is. True positive stays at 0.8, right? Because you still got only four of the uh, true positives out of the five, four of the positives out of five. So true positive is point. Uh, to 0.8, but false positive has gone up to this, right? And so you go on like this, and uh, up to this point, false positive keeps on increasing up to 0.6, right? So one, two, three, you identified the three uh, uh, zeros, meaning if you keep re re decreasing the cutoff. Okay, so for example, up to the cutoff of 0.378, your false positive keeps on increasing, true positive doesn't change. Then when you consider the next case, if you make the cutoff as uh, 0 0.02, then you capture the other true positive. So your uh, true positive rate goes to one, meaning you've identified all the five uh, positive cases. Okay. And then of course, if you keep on decreasing the cutoff even further, you're not going to be able to increase the true positive because you've identified all the true positive, all the positives. So it stays like this. So this is the chart that is actually developed. Okay. Of course, in this particular case, we can visually determine what the cutoff should be. In this case, let's assume that we would like to, you know, our best bet is 
to get the true positive rate of 0 0.8. In other words, identify all the uh, four of the five uh, buyers without incurring any false positives. Okay, because the criterion when you're using the ROC chart is to try and choose the point uh, above the uh, the 45 degree line, which is furthest away from the 45 degree line. And that happens to be this. So the true positive rate of 0 0.8 looks like a good idea. What we want to do now is to find the probability that corresponds to that true positive rate. Okay, if we want that here, it's very clear to us, right? Because we, we got the 0 0.8 from this, this, these four cases, and therefore our true positive rate that we want is uh, 0.8 and that corresponds to a cutoff of 0.596. Okay, so in this case, because the data set is small, uh, we can easily do this visually. But what if our data set had 100 values or 1000 values, and if the data set was not sorted, then this would be a big deal. So that is why uh, we can easily identify using the following lines of code, how to uh, calculate the cutoff probability. Okay, so for the same data, I'm calculating this data frame called prob.cuts. Okay, so let's take a look at prob.cuts and you will see that it looks very familiar. Okay, so in fact, I'm going to look at it here. Okay, so what it's telling you is, uh, of course, if your cutoff is infinity, then, uh, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Both are zero, false positive and true positive are both zero. Okay, actually speaking, if your cutoff is infinity, uh, you, correct, you will not classify anything as true or false. So forget that. So if your cutoff is 0 0.903, which if you remember here happens to be the first row, okay, so if your cutoff is 0 0.903, then your false positive is zero, true positive remains at 0 0.2, and then 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, it's going on like that, but your false positive is still zero, okay. But here what you have additionally is all the cutoffs, okay. So if you go back to this data, you see that, uh, you know, up to 0.596, you can keep increasing the true positive to 0.8 without incurring any false positives, okay. So from this table, if you want a particular true positive rate, just look down this table, go down to the first occurrence of the true positive rate that you want and take that as the cutoff, okay. So here we want 0.8, so we keep looking down the true positive rate from the top and come to 0.8 and say, okay, my cutoff should be 0.596 if I want a true positive rate of 0.8. Okay, so that is how you use the ROC chart to select the cutoff. Okay, now let's go back and look at the larger example that we did in class. Okay, this was a code that I had given you earlier. Okay, so I'm going to read the data and I'm going to first generate the uh, ROC chart. Okay, so once again, it looks like here, uh, the true positive rate of a little above 0 0.8 is what looks good for us, right? Because that is the point which is highest away from the diagonal line. So let's say this is about 0 0.825, uh, okay? So this is like 0 0.825, okay? So now let's uh, see how to get the true positive of 0 0.825, okay? Uh, so... Uh, so we generate the probability, right, which is prob.cuts this time, the new one. This is for the new data. So all we have to do is to look at prob.cuts, okay, and uh, look at the true positive rate that we want here, right? So if your cutoff is this high, then your true positive rate is only very small. So we want a true positive rate of 0 0.825. So we just scroll, keep scrolling down, and maybe we choose this point, it, it's probably 0 0.833. Okay, so that's what it is. So we can use a cutoff of uh, 0 0.46. Okay, on the other hand, uh, yeah, look, this looks like 0.833. Okay, or alternately, maybe this, uh, yeah, this point looks the furthest away. So you want this cutoff of 0 0.833. I mean, not cutoff, the true probability rate of 0 0.8. In other words, you're saying I want to capture. 83% of the successes, what should be my cutoff value? My cutoff value will be 0.463. That is how you use this for calculating the cutoff. 